Hi, this is Dennis with Cybercraft. I'm going to talk to you today about how to pass your CompTIA exam. Now, the CompTIA exams are going to be a mix of multiple choice and performance-based questions. You're going to have a little bit of time before you start the exam to get yourself mentally prepared in your test-taking environment, whether you're doing that at home, remotely, at your home or at your office, or at a Pearson View testing center. And there's a comprehensive strategy you can take to approach each CompTIA exam that I'm going to go over with you today. First, what you want to do is you want to get yourself, when you get into the testing environment, you want to get situated and you want to be fully prepared mentally and physically to take the exam. These exams are usually 90 minutes long and it's an arduous process. You're going to be taxed mentally to go through all of those questions in that time frame. So it pays to take a few moments before you click start exam to get yourself ready. Now, when you're taking the test in a Pearson View testing center, what I advise is going into the testing center. First off, you go into the testing center, you check in, present your ID. You're allowed to bring things into the testing center. I definitely advise bringing in a note sheet or even your mobile phone, accessing uh, practice questions, practice resources, and cramming right up into the right up to the point where you're taking your exam. What I'll usually do is I'll have my phone logged on to cybercrafttraining.com and our resources there before I take any of the tests. And I'll just use that until it's time to take the exam. Then I'll put it, usually they'll give you a locker or a cubby, put that away, put it on silent, and then go into the, the testing room. Once you get in the testing room, you're going to be sitting down at a computer. If be aware, there's going to be other people taking the tests there. And you need to think about the environment that you're going to be in, the noises, the sounds, the what you can expect to experience. Other people are going to be taking the test. You expect to hear mice clicking. Uh, maybe some people will be nervous. They'll be stomping their feet. They'll be tapping a pencil or tapping the desk. It's a very stressful environment. You want to make sure that that doesn't impact you at all. So it's really good to prepare yourself mentally beforehand. Now, you're going to be presented with a computer screen that's going to tell you click here to start your exam. Before you click that button to start your exam, you can prepare ahead of time. You'll be provided with a scratch piece of paper. And what I advise all my students to do is to take 10 to 15 minutes and write out a note section on that scratch piece of paper as a reference guide. A lot of, a lot of students choose to use the ports and protocols as their reference. So if you need to, download our ports and protocol reference sheet you can see the link in the description or and on cybercrafttraining.com here. Uh, get the ports of protocol reference sheet that we have for you. And if you have trouble memorizing your ports of protocols numbers, just spend the first 10, 15 minutes writing them all out. Write down the acronym, the corresponding port number, maybe a little description, TCP or UDP, and make yourself a chart. Anytime you come across a question that's going to reference a port and protocol, you're going to feel confident because you know that that information was fresh in your mind when you wrote it down. So if you come across that question, you don't have to second guess yourself. Some other common things that my students like to write down are nmap commands, uh, different command line commands that you might, like the nmap syntax, the, the flags within nmap, that can be a very useful tool as well. So definitely write out your notes section. And then once you're fully ready, click start exam. Your time will not begin until you click that start exam button. Now it's time to start answering the questions and you're going to have the performance-based questions in a CompTIA exam front-loaded. That means you're going to be presented with performance-based questions up front. What I recommend is that you take a little bit of time and you assess each performance-based question. Take about 30 seconds to take a look at the performance-based question and determine is this something I can answer easily or is this something I will need a little more time on. If it's something that's going to take you more time Go ahead and flag the question and then skip it. You're going to get anywhere between two and 10 performance-based questions. The average is about five. I've seen some students get two. I've seen some students get 10. And that's going to affect the number of multiple choice questions you have. The more performance-based questions you have, the less multiple choice you have. You might even get a test performance-based question. CompTIA will include performance-based questions that will not be scored against you that are used for testing purposes to try and improve their testing methods. 
So you might have, you know, I've had tests with CompTIA exams where I've had the same question twice, but with a diff different format, the exact same questions, exact same scenario, just a different layout. One of those was most likely a test, a um, experimental question, as it's known. So one of those wasn't counted against me or for me. Uh, so once you evaluate your performance of these questions, I recommend skipping those. You can always go back to them. Then start going with your multiple choice questions. When you go to the multiple choice questions, okay, you need to read the question, then read all of the responses, and then go back and read the question again. Question, responses, then question. You do not want to jump on the first question that is correct, because there might be times where there's multiple questions that are correct. So you need to read the question, read the responses, and then read the question again. This is gonna ensure that you fully understand the question and that you're gonna be picking the answer that's the most correct, not just the one that might be correct. There might be two or more answers that are correct. If you're not sure of an answer, flag the question, but make a selection and make the selection with your first instinct. Go through all the questions in this manner, all the multiple choice questions, and then go back and go to the PBQs, okay? So now go back and do the PBQs. And the beauty of doing this method is you're gonna have, you're gonna know from the timer on your test how much time you're gonna need to use for each PBQ. You'll know how much time you have remaining. So out of the 90 minutes, maybe you took 40 minutes uh, or 60 minutes to answer the multiple choice. If you took 40 minutes, that means you have 50 minutes to answer the PBQs. Most likely you'll probably take about an hour to answer the multiple choice, giving you 30 minutes to do the PBQs, or if you're a little quick, maybe about 50 minutes, five zero minutes to do multiple choice, leaving you 40 minutes to do the PBQs. That's, that should be plenty of time. If you have four PBQs, you have 10 minutes per PBQ. That'd be great. So you'll know by the number of PBQs how much time you'll have remaining. So go ahead and now go through the PBQs and answer them. If you come across a PBQ that's tough, leave that as the last PBQ that you attempt. Answer the PBQs to the best of your ability, and then start reviewing your questions. You always wanna use all of your time in the test. The test is a 90 minute test. You're there to take the test, and you've paid a significant amount of money to take that exam. You wanna use all of your time. It's gonna be boring, it's gonna be tedious to take those exams, to use that time to review, but it will increase your chance of passing. I've seen a lot of students who have passed or failed based on the results of one question. Now, once you go through with the first pass, you want to review every single question. Just look for the questions you've answered and not flag. You're just checking to make sure that you've selected an answer. Once you arrive at a question that you've flagged, spend a little bit of time on it and determine if, uh, take your best guess now, you should at this point maybe be more confident with some of these questions. If you come back to a question that you flagged previously, you might be a little more confident in the terminology. Maybe you've learned something while taking the test or your brain is getting into high gear and now that question's easier for you. You might find that. If you're still not sure of a question after you've reviewed it, leave it flagged. Go through all the questions. Remember, you're, you're checking that you've done a response. There's been a lot of times where I've taken tests where I've, I knew the answer. I thought I made a selection, but I didn't select the bubble correctly, or I selected the wrong answer accidentally. That happens. You can save yourself some points, probably at least one point on each exam, just by checking that. So once you go all the way through, then at the end, you should just have flag questions left. Just go back to the flag questions and spend the rest of your time on those flag questions. You don't need to worry about submitting your exam. If the time expires, your exam will automatically be submitted. So don't worry about clicking the submit button, wasting time doing that. Just take all the time you need to answer the questions. With this method, you're gonna be effectively using all of your time very well. Now, uh, there's some techniques you can use. For example, you might find a question an answer or a response, a possible response in a multiple choice that's asking you about a termino some terminology and you're not sure if that's a red herring, a false 
flagged or if that's something that is an actual term. Well, if you find later a question that asks you specifically about that term, like maybe SMTP, you're not quite sure if SMTP is a real protocol or if it's a red herring. Red herring means a false uh, possible answer that's meant to mislead you. And then you see later a question asking you about SMTP, like what port is SMTP? Well, now you know that SMTP is something that is correct. So you can go back and use that to help you with the other question. That's why it's very helpful to do these reviews and go back to the questions periodically. So remember, test taking is hard work. It's gonna be boring and tedious to go through this review method, but you paid money to take this test. You might as well use all 90 minutes of it. If it increases your chances of passing the exam, all the better. All right, once you go through those, uh, those methods, let me review it here. First, you wanna start with your brain dump, your your review sheet, your cheat sheet. Now, if you're taking the test at home, you're not gonna be able to do this really because at home, the proctor is not gonna wanna see any notes around the area and it's very difficult. You can ask the proctor if you can use a scratch piece of paper, but it's very hard for the online proctor to differentiate between a scratch piece of paper that, you, that was blank to begin with or something, a note uh, that you had previously. So I don't recommend using that method if you're taking the test at home or at an office. But it's still useful to cram a note sheet ahead of time. So you might wanna make yourself a note sheet and look at it before you take your exam and then put it away when it's time to take your test. That might be very helpful. And you do your first pass, do your first pass, assess the PBQs, 30 seconds per PBQ, determine if you can pass or answer quickly or not. If you, don't, if you can't, just skip the PBQs, flag them, go to the, uh, multiple choice. You want to answer the multiple choice in about 30 seconds per multiple choice. Once you do that, go back to the PBQs, answer the PBQs, and then do your first pass, your first review, your second review, and your third review. Okay? So you want to do three passes over the questions, essentially. And with this method, you should really improve your chances of passing any of the CompTIA tests because they're all structured the same. Now, when you're studying, there's some techniques that you can use to help you recall the information in the exam. Uh, studies have shown that the human brain links memories with smells, with sounds, and taste. Oftentimes the strongest memory association is with smell. So try and think of a, a memory you have maybe of you know, like baked bread or what would that recall to you or a field of flowers or freshly cut grass. I bet when I say these things, you're getting some imagery in your brain about a memory of some sort that's happened in your life. You can use the same technique when you're studying for your comp T exams, believe it or not. I have students that like to light a candle or light some incense of a certain smell as they're studying. And you wanna make sure that the smell is the same smell throughout your study. You can have like a same snack to incorporate taste with that. You eat the same snack as you're studying for your exam. Then when you go towards the fencing or the, um, the testing center, if you're traveling a testing center, you eat that same snack or you recall that smell, how that smells. I like to listen to music, so I'll listen to the same type of music, usually like some instrumental music, not with lyrics. And then I'll try and bring that music to mind while I'm taking the test, and that usually helps me recall the information. You also want to do sit in the same location or the same area as you're studying and try and get yourself in that mindset. So if you're going to be taking your test at home, this can be really easy. Study where you're planning to take your test. So you sit down the same place where you're planning to take your exam, sit in the same way, set up your desk in the same way, study, and then when it comes time to taking the test, you do the same, you sit down, you have your desk laid out the same. That's gonna help your brain get engaged and remember those concepts really well. Try it out, it might work for you, it might not. You might find some use with it though. Now I also recommend doing, uh, learning the materials at a certain level according to Bloom's taxonomy. Bloom's taxonomy is a methodology that describes how well humans or the steps that humans take when they learn new information. 
The very basic step is going to be to remember the information, to recall basic facts and concepts. Then you move up to the ability to explain those concepts and then use the information in new situations. And this is where a lot of the CompTIA exams test you at, that apply phase. A lot of performance-based questions are going to have you recall the information, but also think about the information in a way that's presented into a scenario, for example. So you want to be up at the apply stage, and usually that requires you going through the information at least two or three times. When you go through the information once, you're going to be, you'd be able to remember or recall basic facts, but to really get up to the apply phase, you have to use the information that you've used. That's why at CyberCraft we're a big advocate of using labs and practical exercise, performance-based questions, practical exercises in our training. So that's how you get to that apply phase. And then as you understand even farther, you don't need to know it at this level of mastery for the comp t exams eventually you're going to be able to produce your own original works this is as, as if you were a master at the subject so you need to be at that apply level and i hope that helps you understand how much studying is involved in preparing for your comp t exams i definitely advocate visualization to do visualization you know, close your eyes take some deep breaths and imagine yourself taking the exam you want to imagine yourself entering the testing center. If you've been in that testing center before, how that looks like, or if you're sitting down at your home or office, how that's gonna look like. Imagine how you're gonna feel taking the exam if you're nervous taking a test. Imagine how that makes you feel. You might visualize if it's a testing environment, maybe other people, maybe some distractions, maybe it's cold, there's air conditioning. You wanna incorporate all the senses into your visualization. What this does is this helps prepare your brain and give you confidence when you go into the test because you're ready, you've rehearsed what's going to happen. So it's not as new as if you were going in without rehearsing. This is very similar to the concept of doing a rehearsal for like a wedding ceremony or something or, or any type of like a, if you're doing a play or some theatrical performance, you wanna do some rehearsals. You're rehearsing yourself taking the test. So imagine yourself how it feels to get a correct answer and imagine getting to a question that's frustrating or where you don't know the answer right away. You need to picture yourself making your best selection, addressing the question and moving on and not being upset or flustered by that. So visualize yourself approaching each question in a structured way and that should help you when it comes to test day especially if you get nervous around taking tests. Now, conclude that visualization, go through all the steps, including those reviews. Remember, you wanna go through the test three times, your first pass, then your review, and then a third review to make sure to go address any of those flag questions at that point, they're still flagged. Take all the rest of the time you need in the exam. If you follow these methods, I'm confident that they're gonna help you pass your next CompT exam and be confident going into that, that exam, you'll know that you have a plan going in and that should really help you. Now, if you're interested in a training, check out cybercrafttraining.com or links in the description. We're happy to help you with our live classes or self-paced classes. We're here to get you certified for your next CompT exam. And I hope this was a very helpful methodology for you, helpful test taking strategy so you can pass your next CompT test. If you have any questions about this or you, you're nervous about taking your next test, please reach out to me directly. I'm Dennis. I'm the owner here at Cybercraft. I'd be happy to help you. And let's get you certified.